we got an interesting one here today. How Vin Diesel exposed the rock's ego. Persona that wakes up earlier than know, anyone, like eats more than anyone, works out harder than anyone, has more success than anyone, and yet still is a gentle, lovable family man. On the big screen, he always beats up the bad guys, never dies, and every movie ends happily ever after. Maintaining All this right. perfect persona is unsustainable, and in 2016, The Rock made one decision that he deeply regretted. What this decision slowly started the unraveling of his career and reputation. You see, there was only one man in Hollywood who had an edge on The Rock, and that was Vin Diesel. Vin had the multicultural appeal, the rough and tough exterior with a soft side that people adored. Like and to put the, the icing person. on the cake, he has just a little more box office success. Vin Diesel made uh -oh. Dwayne Johnson's blood boil. No uh -oh. matter how hard The Rock worked, Vin just seemed to have one up on him. And Vin loved to rub it in Dwayne's face. Wait, how do, how big is Van Diesel, bro? I, dude was looking to the, how big is a rock? First of all, pause. How tall is the rock? Okay, series series being a little a little batty girl to today, bro. He's six five. Okay, how tall is Van, is Van Van Diesel then? Van, I spell last name D I S Diesel. I still spelled it wrong. Five. Five eleven. What? Is that, is, is that what you call movie making magic? Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that right there what you call movie making magic, bro, because there's no way the Van Diesel is ever looking at The Rock in the eyes, bro. If, if that's correct, unless I missed, did I misread something? To six foot. Yeah, yeah, The Rock, the rock is six five. I know he's a big dude, but jeez. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's, there's no way. <laughs> but all right, back to the Rock's Eagle, my fault. Just seemed to have one up on him and Vin loved to rub it in Dwayne's face. Today, we're going to deep dive into the ultimate ego war between two of Hollywood's beloved that can't be right, badasses. Bro. The only battle where The Rock could not control the outcome. In 2004, The Rock's Hollywood career was not going to plan. He quit wrestling to go into acting full time, but failed to hit big. Can From 2004 to 2006, he starred in Walking Tall, which was received well by fans, but hated by critics. He had throwaway roles in the crime comedy Be Cool and the film adaptation of the popular video game Doom, which failed to break even financially. He had the yes. comedy thriller Southland Tales and his first lead acting role in Gridiron Game, Gridiron which good. performed a little bit better financially, but none of these like films that indicated one. that The Rock had a promising film career ahead of him. Even though he saw himself becoming an action star, he was only finding success in kid-friendly films like Walt Disney's The Game Plan now, and Race to Wichita yeah. Mountain. <laughs> along with Get Smart and Tooth Fairy, all of which made over $100 million at the box like office. All those, so In addition to The Rock's career looking unpredictable, the, Rock the Fast and Furious lie. franchise needed a rebrand if they wanted to see increased box office success. The first three films, which many diehard fans of the series consider to be the best, particularly Tokyo Drift, all were centered around car culture and attracted <laughs> car enthusiasts. Back when the series paid attention to detail, I love how they show us Dom approaching the turn downshifting to second, and then clutch popping to break the wheels loose for the drift. Man, I wish they still made movies like this. The fourth film, <laughs> Yo, Fast and Furious, what? still featured many elements of <laughs> Yo, that was a D1 blazer, bro. Oh my goodness. That shit is soap and wet, bro. Goddamn. 
street racing culture, oh. but upped the action scenes to a new level. Explosions, foot chases, fighting crime. This was a test to see if they could slowly move away from car culture, and it was a big hit, securing $360 million at the worldwide box office, making it the most successful film of the franchise at Ooh. that point. It's also important Ooh. to understand that Vin Diesel was the main character of the very first film, I still and can't he denied get the to participate in the second film, and only made a minor cameo in the third film, but he came back strong in the fourth film to a huge success. I'm not suggesting Vin Diesel is the reason why the fourth film was so successful, but from there he became an integral part of the production and storylines. Vin Diesel's production company, One Race Films, took the reins from Universal Pictures to maintain creative control over future films. Diesel worked closely with screenwriter Chris Morgan to produce a story arc to further explore and develop his character. Diesel was clearly very passionate about the franchise, he had been there from the beginning, and he felt like he knew what was best for the franchise going forward. Touchy. This dynamic seemed to work well until another successful actor slash producer joined the Fast team and felt his work ethic and vision was better than Vin's, which led to a feud that caused one of them to leave the franchise as a whole. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Join the millions of fans no. that Played on guys, but then I gamble, gamble responsibly. Only gamble with money that you are willing to lose. Departed from the street racing theme to transform the franchise into a heist action series that happened to have a little theme around cars. Universal did this in hopes of drawing in a larger, more mainstream audience that might otherwise be turned off by the heavy emphasis on cars and car culture. With just one car race, Fast Five is considered the transitional film in the series, placing greater focus on action scenes sequences, brawls, gunfights, and the central heist. Fast Five follows Dominic Toretto after he is freed from a prison transport bus by Brian and his sister Mia. Together they flee to Rio de Janeiro yeah. to avoid capture. In Rio, the protagonists consider carrying out a heist, targeting a corrupt businessman. They assemble a team that was reminiscent of what Marvel Studios would do with the Avengers. Their team consists of characters who were introduced in previous films, including Tyrese's Roman Pierce, Ludacris's Tej Parker, Sung Kang's Han Lu, and Gal Gadot's Giselle Yashar. As the crew plan and execute the heist, they must contend with both local law enforcement and a ruthless federal agent, Luke Hobbs, portrayed by Dwayne Johnson, who is determined to bring them to justice. This role was crucial in revitalizing The Rock's career. In 2010, he decided he was going to risk everything. No more family-friendly movies, shave his head bald, and magically put on 30 pounds of lean muscle to depict himself as the intimidating badass that audiences hadn't seen since his wrestling days. Luckily for him, it didn't take long for him to land this hit. Not only was he cast in the genre he so greatly desired, but he was also an antagonist, which is extremely uncharacteristic for The Rock. For the first time in the franchise's history, Fast Five received overwhelmingly positive reviews, mainly due to its adrenaline-pumping action sequences, jaw-dropping stunts, and great acting performances. It secured 640 million million in the worldwide box office, which was over double the previous film's revenue. Plus, Fast Five is widely regarded by fans and critics as the best one of the series. A review from Empire Magazine praised Johnson's performance, saying, How to reignite an aging franchise? Drop the rock on. Debatable. Dwayne Johnson hulks through the movie, leaving testosterone trails in his wake. Ooh, it was overwhelmingly agreed upon that The Rock's <laughs> Luke Hobbs was the perfect dance partner for Vin Diesel's Dominic Toretto. And the studio delved deeper into their complex relationship with Fast and Furious 6. The film picks up where Fast Five left off, with Toretto, O'Connor, and their crew living as fugitives following their successful heist in Rio de Janeiro. The story unfolds as Hobbs recruits Dominic and his team to help take down a skilled mercenary organization Yo, led by Owen like Shaw, who is wreaking havoc across Europe. In exchange for full pardons, the crew agrees to join forces with Hobbs to stop Shaw. I wonder how many like push-ups or like like dumbbell curls the rock does before every scene. You know what I'm saying, bro? Just to make sure those biceps are nice and juicy. Pause. 
who has assembled a team of highly skilled drivers and operatives. To label the I film as a success would be an understatement. Fast and Furious 6 saw similar positive reviews <laughs> to its predecessor and grossed over $788 million Sheesh. worldwide. Furious 7 would be filmed immediately after Fast 6 with a single story running through both films. Vin Diesel confirmed that the screenplay for the sixth installment needed to be split, with writing for the two films occurring simultaneously. We have to pay off this story. We have to service all of these character relationships, and when we started mapping all that out, it just went beyond 110 pages. The studio said, you can't fit all that story in one damn movie. Despite being filmed back to back, Furious 7 came out years later in 2015. The film follows Dom and his team as they face off against a new enemy, Deckard Shaw, who seeks revenge for his brother. After a devastating attack on their home, the team sets out to find Deckard, who is hunting them down one by one. Furious 7 received generally positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The film was praised for its thrilling action sequences, emotional depth, and heartfelt tribute to Paul Walker, who tragically passed away midway through filming. At the box office, Furious 7 would be the first film in the franchise to surpass $1 billion, grossing Damn. over $1.5 billion worldwide. And I, I guess I didn't really know how big these movies were, I ain't gonna lie. I just went along and watched every single one of them <laughs> and just wasn't paying attention, bro. Because, whoa, one billion? Did I say a billion? He said billion with a B? One billion dollars. This is a billion with a B, over one point five billion worldwide. Sheesh. And despite Vin Diesel and The Rock being considered equally as important to the That's Fast crazy. franchise. That's crazy. The Fast and Furious, I didn't, I didn't feel the Fast and Furious like being that big of like a franchise. But as I did like Marvel, like the Marvel's franchise, like I like I felt that like just growing and growing, bro. I don't know. Maybe because like, I don't know actually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Am I the only one? You guys know what I'm talking about? Like you like felt the movie growing and shit like that? outside of the series, they had drastically different careers. Johnson became one of the highest paid action stars because of the series. The same can't be said for Diesel. Johnson appeared in several blockbuster films like Journey 2, The Mysterious Island, G.I. Joe, Retaliation, Hercules, and San Andreas, all of which surpassed $200 million at the worldwide box office. Diesel, on the other hand, struggled to find anything substantial. Babylon AD bombed at the box office and was destroyed destroyed by film critics. The Chronicles Damn. of Riddick and Riddick, the second and third installments of the Chronicles of Riddick franchise, left fans with mixed opinions. The last Witch Hunter didn't make enough to break even at the box office and receive less than stellar reviews. Triple X Return of Xander Cage, the third installment in the Triple X film series, stood out as the only film in his filmography outside of the Fast and Furious franchise to break even at the box office, grossing over $346 million worldwide. For John it was the complete opposite. Nearly every film he starred in in the 2010s Johnson. was a box office success. On top of that, it's he even made a brief return to the, the Rock wrestling ring. Just say the Rock's Hollywood what? takeover was a huge success, and it kind of made the Fast and Furious franchise seem like it was a second priority to him. His overwhelming success in Hollywood may have made him feel like he knew the right way to do things, and maybe he should call the shots. On the other hand, the franchise was seemingly all that Vin Diesel had, which understandably made him super protective over the creative vision. But The Rock followed Vin's lead for long enough, and he was tired of it. So he decided to make an Instagram post that he would later deeply regret. On August 8th, 2016, Johnson posted a lengthy, now deleted Instagram post in which he praised his female co-stars as well as the fate of the Furious crew, but called out some of his male co-stars without referring to anyone by name. There's no other franchise that gets my blood boiling more than this one, Johnson wrote. My female co-stars are always amazing, and I love them. My male co-stars, however, are a different story. Some conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, while others don't. The ones that don't are too chicken sh to do anything about it anyway. Candy asses. When you watch this movie next April, and it seems like I'm not acting in some of the scenes, and my blood is legit boiling, you're right. An actor basically denouncing a film that they are supposed to be promoting is extremely rare. I mean, he set it up for people to go in there with a negative mindset. Yeah, this was real, extremely weird. uncharacteristic for The Rock. I mean, what about family? 
You know, the word that was said 81 times in the Fast franchise? The media was in a frenzy trying to figure out what co-star The Rock was talking about. Fans were able to rule out Tyrese Gibson after he posted a video of The Rock singing to his nine-year-old daughter with the caption, DJ happens to be one of the most humble, down-to-earth, and professional people I've ever worked with. DJ. More importantly, he's my brother. We have never had it's a problem. Dwayne The Rock we'll Johnson. Never have a That's the only name I want to have to remember search. that the Fast series is one of the most successful global film franchises of all Johnson, time. So while this DJ, may seem like media drama, characters. the media knew they had a juicy story on their hands. And it seems like they amplified the drama as various media outlets were reaching out to anyone who worked on the Fast series to get a quote and further this story. TMZ posted another article confirming that Johnson's social media rant was targeted at Vin Diesel. A quote production source said the pair reportedly butt heads in part because Vin is a producer and has made decisions that didn't sit well with the former wrestling champ. Another with source the former explained that Vin that sounds so good, bro. The that sounds so good. They know how to write. I swear, they, I swear these journalists, bro, they, I guess that's why the journalists, right? If, if they weren't good at it, they'd probably be doing something else, bro. He said, he said that didn't sit well with the former wrestling champion. Bro. I could literally see somebody in the booth literally like just reading that out with a menacing voice, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just didn't sit well with the former WWE world champion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know. The Rock because he kept showing up late for production, sometimes failing to show up at all. However, there were other reports that essentially said the exact opposite, that Vin Diesel was the one who was acting like a diva, specifically during the filming of Fast 7. Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day, a source told The Hollywood Reporter. To Another source that. told Page Six that Diesel was constantly late when we worked together. The source That's added tough. that Diesel acted like a diva and has held up production before, and that it's not surprising that he's the one The Rock is calling out. It's tough to know if there was actually animosity behind the scenes and now the staff is essentially choosing sides, or if these sources were just the PR teams from both actors oh. trying to deflect blame and responsibility. Despite the animosity between them, Diesel and Johnson allegedly met on How August 9th, one bro? day after The Rock's initial Instagram There's post. There's no way bro is, six, bro is five, six foot, bro. If Dwayne, either Dwayne's lying about his height or... Eh, actually, okay, I could, I could see that. I could see that. I could see the one. You know what I'm saying, bro? There's no way this nigga's six five, bro. If he's six foot, and you're like, always like a hair taller than him, bro, you're probably like six one, six two, at the minimum six two, maximum, bro. Six five. Google, you lied to me. Atlanta set to hash out their differences, partly because tensions were running so high, it was almost impossible to shoot. Somebody's scenes. lying. I don't know what Johnson one. seemingly addressed the issue in another Instagram post on August 11th. You guys reading this know how much I believe in the idea of team effort. That means respecting every person, their time, and their value when they step onto my set or partner with our production company. And like with any team, that's a family. There's going to be a conflict. Family, family is going to have differences of opinion and fundamental core beliefs. To me, conflict can be a good thing when it's followed by great resolution. I was raised on healthy conflict and welcome it. And like with any family, we get family. better from it. At the end of the day, me and the <laughs> F8 co-stars all agree on the most important thing, delivering an incredible movie to the world. While family. the co-stars initially remained silent about the situation, other cast members made their alliances clear. On August 12th, Tyrese posted two photos of himself with Vin Diesel, along with a lengthy message referring to him as his brother. Family. Ludacris posted a throwback <laughs> photo, including several of his Fast and Furious co-stars, minus The Rock. After the filming concluded, neither Johnson nor Diesel mentioned the feud for months. On April 4th, The Fate of the Furious had its world premiere in Berlin, during which fans who watched the film noticed that Johnson and Diesel barely shared any scenes together, and in the ones they did, it looked like they may not have shot them together, but the fans weren't even crazy for thinking this. The Rock confirmed people's speculation in an interview with Rolling Stone. That is correct. We were not in any scenes together. He added that the pair had spoken to each That's other odd. on set, which included an important face-to-face -face meeting in his trailer. And what I came to realize is that we have a fundamental difference in philosophies on how we approach movie making and collaborating. It took me some time, but I'm grateful for that clarity, whether we work together again or not. What's crazy is it had been eight months since The Rock initially started this feud with Vin Diesel, and Vin never addressed it. And when Vin finally did decide to speak up, 
It made The Rock angrier than before. On April 7th, 2017, Diesel addressed his rumored feud do? with Johnson during an interview with USA Today. I don't think the world really realizes how close we are in a weird way. I think some things may be blown out of proportion. I don't think that was his intention. I know he appreciates how much I work this franchise. In my house, he's Uncle Dwayne. While there was creative tension on set, Uncle. Diesel took responsibility for any hiccups as a producer. I protect the franchise. I I protect everybody, including Dwayne. I protected Dwayne more than he'll ever know, and it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to know, but he appreciates it. He knows it. Dwayne has only got one Vin in his life. Dwayne Johnson only has one big brother in this film world, and that's me. When asked if the pair had hugged it out and made amends, Diesel responded, Always, always, always. I'm always rooting for Dwayne. I'm the first multicultural megastar in Not Hollywood. Not you little brother him. Exist. Oh, to see nah. another multicultural star come up is something I am very proud of. I'm always rooting Dwayne on. At this point, it became quite Little evident brother. that this feud is quite the ego battle. Because Little while brother. this statement seems positive, nah. there is definitely a <laughs> <of> animosity. <Yes. laughs> he just sunned that man. Ain't gonna lie. He just sunned that man. Yo. Yo, I don't know, know Dwayne by spaz, bro. <laughs> I don't remember what happened. I ain't gonna lie. I remember like the first initial tweet on um Instagram. Not tweet. The Instagram post um, Dwayne made. But after that, it all kind of gets a little foggy, bro. I know Dwayne's about to go crazy here, bro. He's essentially trying to Lil Bro The Rock, which is essentially treating him like he is inferior or has a lower social status. Even though they are Not nearly the tied dictionary. when considering worldwide box office performance, but Vin has just enough more success to be able to flex on The Rock. Not to yes, mention he achieved bit. that in 16 less films. Despite Vin's sarcastic remarks, The Rock chose not to respond. What nobody knew at the time was The Rock was so fed up with Vin Diesel at this point that he decided to walk away away from the Fast franchise. But Damn. first, he had an obligation to complete the next Fast spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw, Shaw is a buddy comedy action film where Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham reprise their roles as Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw. Without Vin Diesel and the other characters from the main franchise, Johnson and Statham received much needed breathing room to fully flesh out their characters. Hobbs and Shaw was a huge commercial success, earning over $760 million worldwide. It was also around this time that the Wall Street Journal reported that Vin Diesel and The Rock both have contractual clauses that explicitly say they cannot lose a fight in movies. Michael Fattel, oh, they both producer, got the same thing? confirmed that fight scenes were choreographed beforehand to ensure they didn't end up too one-sided. During a scene in 2017's Fate of the Furious, Dwayne Johnson apparently had the script tweak to have his character sit down on the floor instead of lying after taking a beating during one fight, because The Rock never lays down. It was Reports like this that slowly chipped away at The Rock's near perfect reputation. Yeah, but they Nobody both have seemed the same to criticize clause, Vin so. Diesel for doing the exact same thing, I'm shit. and perhaps that bothered Dwayne even more. During the promotion for F9, Diesel did an interview with F9. There's nine of these films. Tough How many fast viewers are there? love on set when it came to Johnson's portrayal Nine? of Hobbs. It was a tough character to embody, the Hobbs character. My approach at the time was a lot of tough love to assist in getting that performance where it needed to be. As a producer to say, okay, we're gonna take Dwayne Johnson, who's associated with wrestling, and we're going to force this cinematic world, audience members, to regard his character as someone that they don't know. Hobbs hits you like a ton of bricks. That's something I'm proud of. Yet again, on the surface, it seems like Vin is praising The Rock, but it could be interpreted that he is literally taking credit for Johnson's role. He is basically saying that if he wasn't the producer, then Dwayne would not have performed the role as Hobbs good enough. What we know for a fact is that The Rock was not very fond of Vin's comments. Telling Vanity Fair, one part of me feels like there's no way I would dignify any of that bullshit with an answer. The Rock then addressed the Instagram post that he made in 2016, five years ago, that started this whole thing. Feud. He said the post caused a firestorm, yet interestingly enough, it was as if every single crew member found their way to me and either quietly thanked me or sent me a note. But yeah, it wasn't my best day. He said, I shouldn't have shared that, because at the end of the day, that goes against my DNA. I don't dinner. share things like that, and I take care my of that kind of bullshit goes against away my dinner. from the public. They don't need to know that. That's 
that's why I say it wasn't my best day. He stood behind his previous comments, but he did reiterate that sharing his displeasure for Vin Diesel was not Dana, the right yeah. thing to do. Dana. He mentioned again the alleged meeting with Vin in his trailer, where he said that him and Diesel are philosophically two different people, and we approach the business of movie making in two very different ways. Still, Johnson held resentment towards his co-star, and he denounced Diesel's big brother comments. I've been around the block a lot of times. Unlike him, I did not come from the world of theater. And you know, I came up differently and was raised differently. And I came from a completely different culture and environment. And I go into every project giving it my all. And if I feel that there's some things that need to be squared away and handled and taken care of, then I do it. And it's, it's just that simple. So when I read that, just like everybody else, I laughed. I laughed hard. Clearly, whatever happened between Johnson hands. and Diesel was never really resolved. And as future films centered more around Vin Diesel, The Rock decided to make his exit. In July of 2021, Johnson revealed to the world that he would not be Dude, returning to the main him. franchise while speaking to The Hollywood Reporter. I wish them well so on Fast 9. Go back I wish and watch. them the best of luck on Fast 10 and Fast 11 and okay. the rest of the Fast and Furious movies they do that will be without me. And four months after Johnson said that he's never coming back, Vin Diesel made an Instagram post where he begged him to rejoin the franchise. My little brother Dwayne, the time <laughs> has come. The bro, Van Diesel is not real, bro. Yo, <laughs> you should have cap. You put it. You should have put all, in all caps, little brother. <laughs> My, all caps, little brother, Dwayne. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. No. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not no. a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise idle. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs can't be played by no other. I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. The fulfill Rock was tired of being lil Broad by Vin Diesel, and it really seems like Vin is continuing to troll him. <laughs> Saying The Rock needs to fulfill his destiny Yo. is making it seem like The Rock playing this role for the seventh time is like some sort of major career milestone. <laughs> As if his movie career would crash and burn if he was not in Fast 10. This post made by Vin Diesel backfired, and it pushed The Rock even further away. Johnson claimed he was very surprised by Vin's recent post during an interview with CNN. This past June, when Vin and I actually connected, not over social media, I told him directly and privately that I would not be returning to the franchise. I was firm yet cordial with my words and said that I would always be supportive of the cast and always root for the franchise to be successful, but that there was no chance I would return. He specifically yeah, didn't like how Vin mentioned his children in the post. I guess he's not Uncle Dwayne after all. Unfortunately for The Rock, reality slapped him in the face. It became abundantly clear that The Rock needed the Fast franchise more than he realized. In 2021, Dwayne appeared opposite Emily Blunt in the fantasy adventure film Blunt, Jungle oh Cruise, which was a box office bomb. Maha. With an estimated combined production and promotional cost Maha. of $365 million, the film needed to gross around $500 million worldwide in order to break even, but fell short at 221 million. Then Johnson appeared in another box office bomb in the form of Black uh, Adam, yeah, Black a Adam 2022 shit, superhero lie. film that Variety estimated needed 600 million dollars to break even, falling short once again at 393 million dollars worldwide. The failure of Black Adam was particularly bothersome for it, fans bro. because he used his status to obtain a classic <sighs> Marvel story that had never been brought to the big screen, only to dilute the character and turn him into another movie stream stroking The Rock's ego. Black Adam was supposed to be a dark, sinister anti-hero. Yeah, the reason that's... why the Marvel Cinematic Universe has become such a massive success around the world is because of how all of the characters can tie together. The Rock did not care about how the character fits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He wants to be the universe. But The Rock's universe is a repetitive, predictable movie where he plays the macho man with a kind heart who never loses a fight, never dies, and always concludes with a happy ending. People were simply fed up with The Rock and the way he ruined Black Adam, which led to people comfortably and confidently just speaking out about all of the other things I they despised about the him, all like right. his tendency to tell absurd lies. When it comes to food, diet, and his health and wellness, he seems to exaggerate quite a bit. I can tell you with a little bit of uncertainty because I failed math, I was probably at that time ingesting about anywhere between six to 
Well, I would say possible almost 8,000 calories a day. He set the internet on fire when he claimed that he eats six to 8,000 calories per day. per day. For someone as dedicated as he is to his diet and exercise, achieving a near perfect physique at 52 years old, he should 52? know exactly how much he is eating per day. But countless experts were just not convinced that The Rock was telling the truth. I can tell you there is no way The Rock burns off enough calories to average six to 8,000 calories a day and look like this. If he actually ate those kind of calories, six to 8,000 a day, he would be a hundred pounds overweight. There is no way he eats this much. Naturally, this opened Brexit, the door for people to discuss the other elephant in the room. Does The Rock use steroids? After all, he's 52 years old, 260 pounds, with Lean. only 7% body fat. A physique okay, that most people- Okay, first of all, the nigga does not have 7% body fat. That's impossible. That would, his organs would be filling. Second, third of all, the second, second of all, sec that all, mm. people half his all age all. couldn't achieve <laughs> naturally. He admitted to using steroids for two weeks when he was 18 and then never touched them again. And yet health experts and previous steroid users were convinced he was lying. The rock is not natural. How? Uh, see, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna ask quite dumb questions, bro. The rock is, he's not a patient of mine, so I don't worry about getting sued. And we're gonna be talking about what Steroids Yo, like got some massive the shoulders. Rock uses. Perhaps I'm crushing people's dreams saying I don't believe the rock's natural. But hey, here in the real but world, I wanna look like the rock. Don't look like the rock at 50 I wanna without look taking something. One of the more strange lies that The Rock told was when he tried to convince the world that he never had In-N-Out Burger three times. In 2017, The Rock posted an Instagram photo three at the In-N-Out drive-thru with the caption, I've never been to In-N-Out before, and then goes on to describe his delicious meal. Then five years later, he posted a video seemingly forgetting about his 2017 experience. And the reason why this is history in the making is because this is the very first time that I have ever First of all, lying about In-N-Out is actually crazy. I'm not even gonna lie, cause it's not even that good. Like, you know what I'm saying? If it was, I don't even, if it was something better, I, like, I don't, I would like say, 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 say something, something like that, uh, or even B-Boss, you know what I'm saying, bro? I'd be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? You, you, maybe, 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 but honestly, I could, I could see him forgetting this because like, again, In-N-Out is not that good, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's not that good, bro. I'm actually so underwhelmed when I tried it for the first time. I was like, bro, this is this is this is this is the hype, bro. This is trash. You know what I'm saying? Everything's stale. Tried. So maybe maybe he just tried it and forgot about it because it was so it was so ass. You know what I'm saying, bro? An in and out burger or In-N-Out fries, or anything from In-N-Out for that matter. <laughs> then 15 months later, he posted for the third time saying that this was his okay. very first In-N-Out burger All experience. Right. This is the third time he's done- Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, we gotta go to war. <laughs> he keeps pretending that he's trying In-N-Out for the first time every couple of years. Why, why are you lying about that? You could just say like, I love In-N-Out, so I'm going back to In-N-Out. Let's go, can't wait for more In-N-Out. Why does it always have to be your first time? We know it's not. It appears that the first picture was actually his first time going. The second post was clearly an attempt to advertise his tequila brand. And the third attempt <laughs> was just, well, The Rock being The Rock. There is no exact reason as to why he lies about these things, but it seems to revolve around him being hyper-focused on creating this larger-than-life brand as The Rock. If you follow his Instagram, you will realize that The Rock wakes up earlier than anyone, eats more food than anyone, works out more than anyone, travels the world, does hundred million dollar movies. The Rock does everything bigger and better, but he throws in little jokes and posts his Sunday cheat meals to let you know he is still human and you can relate to him. Then he can use that charm to sell you his newest movie, his tequila, the XFL, or whatever brand is paying him for an advertisement. He doesn't even seem like a human anymore. He seems like an AI version of Dwayne Johnson created in a lab to be a walking, talking advertisement, and people just simply got tired of it. After the two colossal movie failures and his public reputation at an all-time low, The Rock conveniently decided to settle his differences with his big bro Vin Diesel. After he said he no, never wanted to work on the Fast franchise no, again, that's and crazy. That he and Vin Diesel are just fundamentally two different men who will never see Yikes. eye to eye, he posted a video on Instagram saying he was going to return for Fast X. So I am 100% confirming to you guys that around is the world tough. that yes, it is true. Not you eating your Hobbs own words. Is back. Hobbs is back in the Fast and Furious franchise. So, in terms of the why, I think, you know, when you, d despite 
us having our differences, me and Vin, uh, you know, we've been like brothers for years. Oh, and that's despite crazy, having our differences, bro. When you lead with the idea of number one, resolve, but then also you just think about the future and you think about plans that are much bigger than ourselves. When The Rock desperately right. needed a career revival the most, Vin, Vin Diesel, Diesel and the Fast franchise were happy to bring him back into the family. I guess this proves The Rock was Vin Diesel's little brother. Oh, nah, nah, not the little brother at the end, bro. Yo, like at the end of the 